right now, there's a food crisis unfolding in Nigeria. Food shortages are pushing the country to its breaking point. Every hour, 100 children under the age of five die from malnutrition. That's 2,400 young lives every single day. But what makes it worse is that many of these deaths are preventable. Because the problem here isn't necessarily because the lack of food, but rather the lack of ways to keep it fresh. In rural Nigeria, nearly 70% of the population has no access to electricity, which means that for most families, refrigerators, like the ones in your kitchen, aren't an option. And that is one of the main causes why nearly half of all fresh produce spoils before it can be eaten. So, back in 1995, a Nigerian teacher called Muhammad Ba Abba devised a brilliant solution to address this problem. He created this, the Zirpot. By drawing on ancient knowledge and local materials, Ba Abba built an off-grid electricity-free refrigerator that extended the shelf life of vegetables from just a few days to over three weeks. And the impact was extraordinary. But not just on people's eating habits, on entire ways of life. The Zirpot became a global phenomenon, named one of Time Magazine's Inventions of the Year and showered with awards from Rolex and Shell. The concept of the pot-in-pot -pot refrigerator spread across rural Nigeria and throughout the continent. And that's because, in Africa, reliable food supply has always been a challenge, and it's only getting worse. As of 2022, 61% of Africans and over 900 million people experience moderate or severe food insecurity, while factors like poor infrastructure, social unrest, and climate stress all play a role in this complex problem. One of the most preventable causes is what happens after produce has been picked. It's called post-harvest loss, and it accounts for a staggering portion of the food that never gets eaten. Globally, about a third of all food produced is lost at this stage. But in Nigeria, it's even worse. Up to 50% of fruits and vegetables are wasted after harvest. Even a third of imported food spoils before reaching a plate. And the lack of sufficient storage plays a big part in this waste. In sub-Saharan Africa, less than 10% of perishable food is refrigerated, largely because just 1 in 20 households own a refrigerator. And the impact of this problem touches every level of society in Nigeria. For the country's 93 million small farmers, post-harvest waste translates to a 25% loss of income. For the environment, it's a disaster, wasting water, seeds, fertilizer, energy, and land. Globally, food waste is responsible for 8 to 10% of all greenhouse gas emissions, more than the entire aviation industry. And for families, it means less food, higher costs, and reduced access to nutrition, the consequences of which can be deadly. In Nigeria alone, food-related diseases are the primary cause of 200,000 deaths each year. So, when innovations like the Zirpot come along, they aren't just useful. They're vital solutions with the power to improve life. It works through a process called evaporative cooling, humanity's oldest answer to controlling heat. This is a simple yet powerful concept that works on the principle that water needs energy to evaporate. That energy is drawn from the heat of surrounding surfaces, and as the water evaporates, it takes some of the heat with it leaving the surface cooler. We all experience this on a daily basis. When we sweat, the moisture evaporates from our skin and cools us down. Or when a breeze passes over a lake on a hot day and the air feels refreshing. For thousands of years, humans have harnessed this effect to their advantage. The ancient Egyptians would hang wet reeds in the windows to cool the air as it passed through. In Rome, Terracotta pots filled with water were used to bring down room temperatures. And in the deserts of the Middle East, Bedouins soaked the outside of goatskin water sacks and let the hot wind do the rest. Muhammad Ba Abba understood this principle and recognized that it could offer an answer to Nigeria's refrigeration problem. But he also knew that for a solution to have a real impact, it had to meet three criteria. It had to be cheap, simple to use, 
and made from materials people already had access to. And clay pots ticked all three of those boxes. Across cultures and continents, porous clay vessels have long been used for natural cooling. From Spanish botillos and Indian matkas to the earthenware jars found across North Africa, these simple containers kept water cool long before the invention of electric refrigeration. But unlike the ancient use of terracotta pots to cool rooms or water, Ba Abba's design was built to preserve food. I know it cools, but then people use it just to store ordinary drinking water. Then I started contemplating, how can it be used for other things as well, if it can cool? Then I started making experiments with the pot. After two years of testing, he had a working prototype. The design was simple, a smaller clay pot nested inside of a larger one, with a layer of wet sand packing between them. As the water evaporated from the porous outer pot, it drew heat away from the inner chamber, cooling it down by as much as 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The wet sand also acted as a thermal mass, helping the inner pot hold its cooler temperature for longer. With the money he saved from his teaching salary, Ba Abba funded the production of the first 5,000 zirpots, distributing them to local villages for free. And the impact of these things was immediate. Tomatoes, which usually spoiled after a few days, now lasted more than three weeks. Eggplants stayed fresh for 27 days instead of three. And even African spinach, which normally wilted within hours, remained edible for nearly two weeks. Word quickly spread about the pot-in-pot -pot refrigerator. In 2001, he was awarded the Rolex Award for Enterprise, receiving $75,000 to expand production. With this, he hired and trained local potters, establishing five small factories. Each one could produce up to 300 pots per day, with the set selling for just 40 cents. Soon, he was selling 30,000 pots a year. And the effect that these pots were having on rural communities in Nigeria was nothing short of remarkable. Less food was going to waste, which meant less money was spent on replacing it. And because that food was now lasting longer, families made fewer trips to the market, saving time on what is often a long, exhausting journey. Nutrition improved too. People were eating fresher, safer meals, in one study, 88% of participants said they were eating more fruits and vegetables since using the Zirpot, while reducing the impact of food-related disease. Farmers felt the benefits as well. With the ability to preserve their produce for longer, they no longer had to settle for quick, discounted sales. With produce reaching better prices with less waste, a pilot projected in Sudan reported farmers' earnings increasing by as much as 50%. But perhaps most surprisingly, the Zirpot also improved the life for young women and girls who were tasked with rushing freshly harvested food to market. With fewer trips, many were able to spend that time attending school instead. Even the manufacturing of these things was making a difference. In many areas, traditional pottery had been in decline, replaced by aluminum cookware and mass-produced alternatives. But the Zirpot sparked new demand generating local business while reviving skills and offering employment opportunities. The Zirpot was, by all accounts, a resounding success. But like any technology, it has its limits. They worked best in hot, dry, and breezy environments. Places like Northern Nigeria, where low humidity allows the evaporation process to work efficiently. In humid regions, the cooling effect is much weaker. They're also not suitable for items that require sustained temperatures below 20 degrees Celsius, like meat or dairy products. To keep them working, the sand between the pots needs to stay consistently moist, and that requires regular access to water, something that, ironically, isn't always available in the very places that need off-grid refrigeration the most. Mohammed Ba Abba passed away in 2010. But still today, his Zirpot continues to change lives. They're still widely used throughout rural Nigeria, as well as other African countries like Cameroon, Chad, Eritrea, Niger, Sudan, and the Gambia. In 2008, 
Doctors Without Borders began to use a modified version of his design to store anti-malarial drugs for children in Guinea, while more recently, MIT launched a training program in Mali teaching locals how to build and use clay pot coolers. Even today, the idea continues to inspire. Now, people in Nigeria, they actually have a really neat device called the Zero Pot, and it's an evaporative cooler. And with this device, they can actually double or triple the shelf life of all the fruits and vegetables they store inside. So my idea was pretty simple. It's to take this rudimentary device and to bring it to the 21st century with modern technologies and modern design techniques. Now, designers and engineers are experimenting with new materials, replacing sand with charcoal or using bio-based gels that retain moisture for longer. Some are even creating lightweight, collapsible versions for mobile use. While beyond clay, high-tech refrigeration solutions are emerging to address Nigeria's ever-growing food challenges. The big idea behind Code Hubs is to deploy 100% solar-powered working code rooms. We have a pay-as-you-go business model. Rather, we call it pay-as-you-stop. So what we are trying to do is to deploy a seamless cold chain from the farm to the market, making more nutritious, safe, hygienic food available for Nigerians. These are different paths, but they point in the same direction. And yet, even 30 years after Ba Aba created the first Zirpot, the original idea still offers something that few other systems can match. It's powered by nature, it doesn't need batteries, moving parts, or even consistent sunshine. Just clay, water, and sand. And that's because the Zirpot was always more than just about food. It was about local people using local materials to solve local problems. Traditional initiatives, cultural initiatives will help as well, of which the port is one and is helping. 